He's like, no, you don't want to play. <laughs> I see Why you. Not? Why not, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> like, you're not doing nothing. <laughs> if you ain't doing nothing, you, 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 you <laughs> exactly. You ain't. Busy. Why I gotta do something? Yeah, the entire internet can. He's getting his hair braided right now. Okay. He'll be done in about 15 minutes. All right. We're live. Okay. Say hi. Oh. <laughs> hi. <laughs> okay. He'll be done in about 15 minutes. All right. All right. right on. <laughs> okay. Really? <laughs> Oh, wow. That reminds me of that time my mom jumped in. Remember that? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was like, who's that? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Ma, hang up. And she, she, she's like, oh, okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> she <laughs> was like, so cute. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Ma, hang up. <laughs> like, what are you doing Do here? Do what now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Have, have fun with your little friends. <laughs> Why does it sound like you're like 10 years old? Have fun with your friends. <laughs> yeah, have fun with your little friends. Okay, my hang up, please. <laughs> like, oh, oh, dear Lord. Okay. Okay. Right. A society, a society. Yeah, stop apologizing and just hang up by now. You know? <laughs> oh, I can't. Yeah. yeah. Was I was I was a little embarrassed, but that was still funny. You were still what? I said that was still funny. It's always gonna be funny. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was a moment. <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely a moment. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um might as well just get right into it, right? So we're doing Knives Out, and we're doing the second one, uh, Glass Onion. Yeah, Glass Onion. All right. And um, I like the first one, right? I really like the first one. And the fact that it made um, Chris Evans the bad guy. Was, I know. Yeah, right? It was, I was like. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. It was so interesting because it was like, oh, yeah, he gets to play a bad guy. You know, you're used to seeing him as, you know, Captain America for like the last 20 years. And everything, everything, Mr. Pure. So, yeah, it kind of caught you off guard in the first one. Like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> but he, he also plays uh, a bad guy in um, The Gray Man. I have yet to watch it. It's good. I haven't watched it yet. I haven't, I haven't watched it yet. But, yeah, I, I have yet to watch it. Yeah. I won't say anything. I won't ruin it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so many people do like shut up. Yeah, I just stop right there. Okay, so but it, it here's the thing: it, it's not like um, it's not like it was a spoiler. You know what I mean? Like he, you just know he's the bad guy. There's there's no right, 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 yeah, right. So right. I, I, didn't, I didn't ruin anything for you. All right, so I know, like you like you didn't do for Black Adam. I appreciate that. <laughs> 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 Try to be smart about it, but you know, it's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I didn't like that movie. Everybody died, and you're like, "What?" And I'm like, "No, nah, I just <laughs> <laughs> no." Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, on this glass onion, right? On this glass onion, um, I I was lost. Like, I didn't understand what was going on. I wasn't able to follow. Until I realized that um, they were playing back a week later, so it was like a flashback, and in, and then it, it's like after the flashback, um, I started you know when the sister showed up and you know she's got the long black hair, 
and when, they, when she showed up, and then they go to Greece and they're talking about it. And she's got her now she has her sister's haircut, and they're you know you're gonna pretend to be the sister. And I was like, oh crap, Edward Norton, <laughs> Edward Norton killed her sister. <laughs> like it was just so obvious, and I I hate to say that, and it was just like it was so obvious at that point, you know, because up in you know before the flashback, you can clearly see him hand the glass to uh, Batista's character, you know, Edward Norton, uh, handing the glass to Batista's character, um, taking the gun from Batista when they're you know they they hug, he took the gun from him. You know, you can see mm-hmm. him throw it into the bar. So it's like you see Edward Norton, you know, acting these things out. And then when they did the flashback and you realize oh, the main character, Cassandra, is dead. And this girl's playing the sister. You know, she's pretending to be her twin. And it was just like, wait, Edward Norton was completely thrown off when she showed up on the beach. You know, when they, when they got off the boat and they're... You know, he's seeing everybody, and then he sees um, uh, Daniel Craig, the detective, and he's like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, and he looks at the sister, and it's just like, uh, you're not supposed to be here. And then everything just... Yeah, his facial expression was something else right yeah. then. It was like... <laughs> uh, yeah, right? That, that stutter look right there, like... Uh, you know, it, and the, as soon as that, ha- it was just like, okay, now I get it. Now I understand the look on the beach. Everything makes sense. Edward Norton's the killer. And, it, and, <laughs> and at that point, it's like, um, what, what, what's his name? Mr. Yellow. Like, Mr. Yellow did it in the library with a wrench. You talking about Clue? <laughs> yeah. At that, Mr. Mustard. Mr. Mustard. Mr. Yellow. <laughs> That's how old that I was am. my game. Don't be talking about my game. That and risk. But go ahead. That's, that's how old I am. It wasn't mustard. It was just yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Yellow. Mr. Yellow did it in that room over there. <laughs> I just made up my own game. With the plunger. <laughs> right? With a plunger. Um, I'm surprised. Okay, because when it came on, the very first thing that popped up was the date. So I was like, oh, okay, we got a date. So I'm like, there's going to be some going back and forth in this Joker. Okay, that was the first thing that came to my mind. Um, And then it was the whole box thing when they were opening it up. Right. And remember when it got to the tic-tac-toe? Okay. What was the F for? Because I looked at it and had to pause for a second. I was like, that could spell out fool's. Yeah. With the X yeah. sounding like a Z. I was just like, do they even notice? The, like, what's the F for? F has no purpose. <laughs> yeah. Like the girl said, she goes, I know this one is tic tac toe. I was like, like I'm going to need up. you to calm. <laughs> and she just kept saying it. <laughs> like, I know this tic tac toe. We know it's tic tac toe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I, that kind of stood out to me like, like big time, big time. Um, what else was there? Oh yeah, so I'm I I don't I don't see how you I'm like I followed the story, like perfectly. <laughs> it's like it was kind of like a Vanilla Sky for me. I like movies like that. Yeah. Um, so it was easy for me to follow along, and I thought it was hilarious that um Blanc figured out the whole initial mystery like in like five seconds, and he was like. You weren't supposed to freak out. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah, he just he ruined it for him. Like this was right. the like, weekend extravaganza that just got shot down in like three seconds. <laughs> Spent all this money, all this time. <laughs> now, now, okay, it goes back to the beach, like what you were saying. So I was sitting here, like, okay, he's looking at her, weird like that. And then he's kind of like, oh, Mr. Detective, you know, before she gets there, like, who sent you an invitation? Yeah. So if he didn't send the invitations, who sent the invitations? Because he would know who we sent them to. Yeah. But remember, um, it's not until the flashback that you realize he never got an invitation. He faked it. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, but I'm just saying, like, from that point, it was, yeah. it was like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, well, when he pulls him up to the uh, Glass Onion office, you know, it's, they're they're talking about it. And he's like, oh, you know, who sent you? And they're trying to figure it out. And they're like, oh, yeah, the box was reset. So you're like, okay, like, what's what's going on? So you, I, yeah. I could say that in a, in a way, I was, um, I was just a little thrown off. Like maybe you know who's this guy that keeps walking around in the background? Like, you know what I mean? The butler did it. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, that's the one guy left standing who can tell the story. He that's tell who the he story. was. clear indication you know there was no clear indication as to you know the, the butler the maid you know one you know, what are they called the disruptors you know, one of the disruptors but it's, i love how he calls them disruptors yeah <laughs> um, but as soon as when as in fact they weren't the disruptors he was the disruptor <laughs> but if you think about it well this is what i thought like when i saw the whole glass office like with the chairs and everything i was like Okay, but everything was crystal. Even the little statues in the walkway that came up when they were coming up on the bo um through the boat, I was like, so everything's pretty transparent. Like it's in plain sight, yeah. but you can't see it. You know how you can f you look for something and it's right in front of you, but you don't see it. Yeah. That's what it was for me. And then there was like, okay, onion, a lot of a lot of layers, a lot of layers there too many people backstories flashing back <laughs> like there's yeah. just a lot of layers to that whole thing yeah I, I for me I, if the um if the beach scene would have been mm -hmm. cut, if that would have been cut just a little bit then I think I don't think I would have picked up on that you know what I mean if it was real fast his reaction to seeing her um, behind the detective then I wouldn't have picked up on it, and I just, you know, I would have just kept going and it'd been like, you know, ooh, ooh, ooh. But his his expression and the the camera spent so much time on his expression that it was just, you know, once the it's flashback, perfect. yeah, once the once the flashback made it very clear that the, you know, sister was killed and the twin took her place, it was just like, oh my god, it's Edward Norton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's ever Norton. You know You're I mean? like, oh, a surprise. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, so for he he reminds me of like a talented Mr. Ripley ish. Like if you look like back in which flashback was it? He had the long hair. Can't tell. I'm like he like he takes on these personas. Oh, when they were you know, black. trying to pretend like he's somebody, you know, what I mean? yeah. and then he's, he's not always who he, he's never who he says he is. That's just, we'll just put that out there. He's never who he says he is. He can't be himself. It's like, he just steals and robs and takes everything and says it's his, the whole narcissistic thing. And I could have sworn she said something about a red pill, and I was just like, "Are we are we going to the Matrix now? Like, what's going on?" <laughs> I think I wrote, it. "I don't know." It's like some red pill stuff, Miles. Something. It was at thirty four minutes and forty eight seconds, but I was dying laughing. I was like, "Is this the Matrix? Are we are we going to the Matrix? Red pill, blue pill." <laughs> yeah. Like I can't. Um, but I loved how they collaborated. Uh, Blanc and uh, Helen. Oh, that was going to say. Remember in the dark? He called her name, her real name, in the dark. He called Helen. Yeah, but not Andy. She was supposed to be playing her sister. And he called her by her real name. 
Helen. Called out to Helen and not to Anna. Right. Like, did anybody not catch that in the dark? I was just like. <laughs> Yeah, right. So I was like, I, and I, after because I was like, okay, maybe it was just me, but then after that, I was like, no, he clearly said Helen. Yeah, yeah, and I, because at the at that point when it, um, when the lights go off, um, so we weren't privy to this information until after the flashback, and that's after um, uh, the detective starts breaking. Yes, we were. No, because we remember before when um, what's Batista's character when he gets poisoned, and then the lights go out, and he calls for Helen in the dark. You know, we don't know. Nobody knows what they shared each other on the phone. They don't. You know, we don't know what's what uh, the information that was shared on the phone before he poisoned her, and it's not okay. revealed until after detective comes back and starts breaking it all down that it was he says um who is miles says her name on the beach on the beach yeah i don't remember that it says what did you say andy or uh dang it i didn't write down the thing he did say her name everybody's what and then um, that's why I noticed it in the dark. I was like, who the heck is a woman? <laughs> oh, that can't be. Yeah, there's no there's no way he said Helen on the beach prior. No, 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 no. Her name, she, she's supposed to be playing her sister. Her sister yeah. is Andy, Cassandra. You know, they called her Andy for short. And in the room, when it got dark, Blanc said Helen. Right, because, okay, yeah, because Detective Blanc was the only one that knew that Anna and Andy. Right, but I'm not like, did anybody in the dark catch that? This is way before all we find out what's going on between the two of them. But I was like, who the heck is a Helen? Oh, okay. All right. So, all right, now I get what you're saying. Now I'm following. Sorry, now you there? Okay, I know it takes I me was... forever to get my point. <laughs> I was lost. If I if I was writing it, you'd have got it like right away. But <laughs> I was lost. Like, what are you talking about? Oh, like, come on. Did we watch the same movie? <laughs> it made sense in my brain. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got, I what do you want me to say? I gotta remember that you watch movies and you remember them in like this Quentin Tarantino fashion. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm special. What you want? <laughs> All right. So, um, what were what was like? What was the best part for you in this movie? The best part for me? Yeah. Um, that's a good. Question. Oh, my favorite part is seeing Miles' face. When Helen went to go release the lever for, uh, <laughs> for the Mona Lisa, the Mona Lisa. <laughs> it was like that is the only legit thing I had. In mind. Yeah. They all... I was like crushed, burned. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Uh, I I loved it when. She starts going around the room and breaking all of the the glass, right? That I love that part because as she she does it, she's just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh no, no, no. How about this one? <laughs> no reaction. No nothing. Let me show you how much I can. <laughs> And then the followers. <laughs> and then, of course, the followers. Yeah. Right. They chime oh, in. Well, she's going to do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> but she's still, she's still running around, and she keeps, like, eye contact, direct eye contact, and she breaks each and every single one of them. And she tears the <laughs> whole room up. It's a little sarcastic, but. <laughs> yeah. And she just tears up this whole room. And, it's, and the, the look on her face. 
So now more Monet, she can she has some facial expressions. <laughs> that was like that made you think about your mama <laughs> when she about to spank you. Mm-hmm. This right here. Mm-hmm. All right. I can't, I can't. No, that was <laughs> that was good. Yeah. And then Miles all okay, break another no, I'll break a glass. Right? I'm a billionaire. <laughs> you won't be a billionaire for long when I get to that Mona Lisa. <laughs> yeah, I think the I think the glass breaking was probably the best scene for me. Right? That was like his whole scene. world was shattering. And he didn't care because it was just glass. You know what I mean? All of that was just glass. Everything that she destroyed in that room, it didn't mean anything. And it wasn't until I think what she likes the fire. Like okay, now you're getting out of control. Now you're now you're getting out of control. Like now you're now you're actually crossing that line of causing permanent damage because I could sweep up glass, but you're about to set fire to my house. Like that's where I'm. You know, he had to draw the line somewhere, and you could see his you know his body language and everything change. Yeah, and that yeah. plays so much into like the real time, you know what I mean? So it was like, okay, the glass breaking, like he doesn't care. Those are pretty much like his friends. I can I, I can replace you guys. You guys aren't important to me, right? And then it gets to the clear, <laughs> his house running on that clear, like you you forgot? <laughs> okay, let me mind you. <laughs> it was my it was my idea too, and I thought that was funny too. Her last name was Brand, and he was Alpha, like an Alpha brand. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> it was an Alpha brand, but there were so many Alpha and Omega things in the movie. Like uh, on the boat. I don't remember if it was Alpha. I think it was Alpha. No, Omega. And then Dr. What's-His-Face, the scientist, had one on his lapel, big giant Omega, like <laughs> this big on his lapel. <laughs> like, is that heavy? Um, I know I saw something else. I can't remember. I didn't think I wrote it down. <laughs> My notes are everywhere. <laughs> They're everywhere. Um, but what do you feel? Oh, my other favorite part at the end. <laughs> oh girl waiting for him to come to his training session and she sees I was like what the hell uh, Serena Williams oh <laughs> cause she did she did look like a poster for like a couple of good minutes she's just, right. she's just reading and reading she's like okay are we gonna do this or right. like oh wait a minute <laughs> Serena Williams. <laughs> so yeah, that was nice I can't. by her. I almost forgot about that. I was like, oh yeah, I wrote that in the notes. <laughs> right, so but, yeah. If there, was, um, if there was one thing that you can say you didn't like in the movie, what would, what would that be? That I didn't like? Yeah. I Okay. I think this is something that I don't like, but it applies to like almost every movie. You have that one character that has no purpose being in the film whatsoever, and you're like, "What? Why?" <laughs> I think that was like whiskey, really. Batista's girlfriend. I was like, "Come on!" <laughs> like, only thing I remember from her is uh, she's like, "Yeah, sorry, feminist," and that was it. What they were talking about. Boop. That's it. That's all I remember. <laughs> but I'm like, I, do, I just, I know you gotta have, you know, space fillers <laughs> for whatever reason. But when you have two, because what was it? Also, uh, Birdie's assistant, right? Yeah. Girlfriend, assistant. What was she? <laughs> like, can't Her really assistant. tell. Yeah, but you know, she was. I was like, what's your purpose? What's your angle? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think I already said it, which was the, the beach scene. 
I think that was the only one thing that I would have changed about this game. And it, that was the feet and the, the twin. I'm trying to think. I think Daniel Craig with his accent is perfect. You said what? <laughs> As a, the, the only one thing that I, I just didn't care for in this movie was the um, the beach scene when they show up on the beach. And um, Miles, when Edward Norton's character, he's about to greet um, Peck is blind. And then he, he sees Cassandra behind him. And, you know, the facial, you know, like I was saying, uh, his facial expression gave away the fact that he was, he was the killer. You know, and I, I wouldn't have figured that out, like, had it not been for that scene being so long. If they would have just shortened that, that facial expression a little bit more, it just would have been like, you know, you should know that she's there because you sent her a box. So it didn't take that much of closing in on his face to see his expression. It, if it was just a little bit shorter, then it would have threw you off. You wouldn't have been able, yeah, you wouldn't be able to put two and two together. Yeah, and I, I think that's what did it for me was the fact that well, you sent her a box, which means you were expecting her to come. So the fact that she's standing there should not throw you off that much. And it but it wasn't even just him, though. It was everybody looking at her like that. Right, but when she showed up on the dock and everyone looked at her, it was more of, what the hell are you doing here? I can't believe she showed up. When Edward Norton first catches a glimpse of her, his expression is completely blank. He has no words. and He's lost as to why are you here? Because I killed you. So once it becomes no! evident, yeah, once, once it becomes evident that she's dead and this is the twin that showed up on the beach. Right, right. Right. Then his facial expression makes sense. It's like, okay. So when she, when she showed up on the dock, Everyone is kind of like, why are you here? You're the trouble. You're the problem. You're the elephant in the room. But Edward Norton's character, Miles, was the only one who drew a complete blank when he saw her. So, right. So here's the other thing was, okay, so if he knew, he could have kept it a secret. Um, Duke, he could have kept it a secret with Duke, you know. But I guess he just didn't want anybody else to know. So he just killed Duke off. But why? You know, why, why was was really my purpose. Is it, Oh, not my purpose, but my question was like, why did you kill Duke? You mean, you just could have been like, hey, keep it on the down low. It's part of the thing, you know. <laughs> it's it's where every, everybody's in on this, but just, shh, you got a clue. Um, because he seriously made it a point to try to shoot her. And what blocked her? It was the notebook. The notebook. I'm, okay. That must have been one heck of a notebook. Yeah, one, one hell of a notebook. <laughs> it didn't look that thing to me. I was like, is there some metal in that joker? What's yeah. going on? Uh, I can't. But I figured when he was shoulder early when he was saying like he had blood like he had, you know it's a whole it's like uh and then not too long after that blanc picks up the hot sauce he's like yeah you can keep one you can take one like, yeah, yeah okay i'm pocket it i did not have any inkling that that was all gonna associate because when we saw her i was like dang she got shot already i was like well, why, why she die for what purpose and then when they came i was like oh sneaky 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 <laughs> I like that part. I like that part too. Yeah, that was crafty. All right. So, where do you see where do you see this going? Do you see it as a a, a trilogy? Do you see it as a small franchise, like four or five films? Honestly, I don't. Okay, I don't really want to say like it's like a trilogy. I feel like it's more about the detective going on these uh, mystery solving, like you know, like Sherlock Holmes. You yeah, know, well, that's what I mean. He's a modern day Sherlock Holmes. So I feel like I don't think it's going to be like sequels. 
more so is just like, you know, this is just another day. This is another another mystery for me to solve. You know, I I see it continuing. Okay. Um, it's kind of like James Bond. You know what I mean? How many James Bonds can you have? You have like a million James Bonds out there, right? And it's like James Bond has changed. I don't know how many times, but we still got James Bond going. So I feel like why not have like this mystery thing keep going because. It's real live who done it. Yeah. You know, same thing like if you're trying to do like you know, forty eight hours later or what is it, forty eight hours T V show, forty eight hours. You know, when they got two days to figure out the crime. So I kind of feel like it's like that. <laughs> He's this master detective. I'm look, I solved your crime in like five seconds and I haven't even been here for like an hour. <laughs> and then there's an underlying mystery. And then he's like, Oh, because I think that's exactly how he did it in the last one. Yeah. He was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of hoping the same thing. I'm kind of hoping uh, um, that they do continue with these movies. Um, I, would, I wouldn't mind watching, you know, maybe like two or three or more of them. Uh, I think it would be great because they, they are fun to watch. They're funny, yeah. intriguing, and crafty. They're not predictable like completely predictable you're like oh i figured that out but okay i was wrong <laughs> wait a minute wait a minute back up back up yeah the, the the first one with the chris evans thing just completely threw me like through oh yeah. yeah i was like I, I that's why i liked it so much i was like oh nobody gets me thrown off like that. <laughs> yeah but then who made then, this movie and then that's the thing when it came to the second one it was like okay it has to be a main character so i mean you know, Edward Norton, he's, he's got to be. Yeah, I went in. I went in with some insight. Like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna start looking for what I don't need to be looking for. <laughs> Read between the lines. <laughs> yeah, I, I really that, liked it. I really, really liked it. It was great. Yeah, uh, that's. I I really enjoyed this movie. Um, I had fun watching it, and um, it it made me want to go back and watch the first one. You know, just because, right. <laughs> like just because. All right. So what's your what's your star? Where are you at with your star? My star. Yeah. Um especially because one of my other favorite scenes was Duke's mom like, "What? What?" When he was like, "You going to get mother?" <laughs> <laughs> Dying. Um yeah. I definitely I I give it a 9. I give it a 9. Um just, just because I want to give it a nine. I'm like, I'm like, I barely. If like, it has to be truly exceptional to get a solid, solid ten. Yeah. Kind of like, I like Violet Knight. Violet Knight got a ten. This <laughs> 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 was missing a little bit for me there, but I was just like, it. Yeah. It gets the two thumbs up. Now that you mentioned that, the mom, right? Duke's mom is in the background, and she's just completely like not even paying attention to anything. But she just keeps spitting out the answers to all the clues, you know, like, as they're trying to figure out this box. And it, it, that was hilarious. Like, that was funny to me. And then finally, when Whiskey asked her, she's just like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, Wait a minute. You know like, wow, else. mom does not care for you that one. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So. I'm like, I'm sorry, child. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I definitely have to give this a nine. Uh, nine stars for me. I loved it. Uh, the you know the movie was hilarious. I liked the first one and the second one, and uh, I hope they definitely you know, come out with some new movies in the future. So I think I, I feel like there's a pattern. Like they're gonna get better as each one comes along. Because <laughs> the first one was great, but this one was like, oh, I like <laughs> the yeah. imagination, of everything. But everything was even more so clear as far as how everything was related. To what was going on, the transparency, <laughs> you know, it was it was great. I liked it yeah. a lot. All right, so there it is. We're gonna wrap up another episode. Oh wait, I'm sorry, I almost missed this. Um, who who you almost missed? Uh, the comment section. It looks like somebody jumped in, <laughs> in the comment section and said somebody said something. Yeah, I'm gonna slide this over a little bit and. So, Robert Paco Sandoval and my. I'm like, did you freeze on me? 
What happened? What happened? What happened? You chopped my screen off. That's not good. You chopped your screen off. How does one chop their screen off? Um, I tried to slide the the screen over so we could see the comments. And um, you messed up stuff. Yeah, I messed up stuff big time. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, well, I'm I'm gonna be the bomb right now. What? <laughs> so I'm just waiting. To You're going to get the door when groceries get here. Um, Robert Paco is too easy. All right. All right. You know, but that's what, yes, I agree. Because like I said, it was, it was almost predictable for that one. Right. Yeah. But when you got to this one, it's like they get a little bit better, a little bit trickier. So I'm like, I, I'm looking forward to whatever, hopefully the next one may be. And be even harder. <laughs> and see, I, I was I was the opposite. I had no clue it was Chris Evans in the first one, but Edward Norton was a dead giveaway for me. So I mean when he came into the when he came into the reading, oh everybody's like, Oh now you show up. You've been gone for like ten thousand years. What the heck have you been? And I was like right then and there it was like, Oh, he's gotta be <laughs> You know, he's just there for all yeah. this. And that's exactly all the wrong where he goes in the comments. Um, his next post says, uh, "If you paid attention when they met him, one of the bottles were missing behind him from from the torching the office." One of the bottles what? Uh, it says one of the bottles was missing behind him when they torched the office. Okay, I haven't even gone back to look. Look at all the mistakes yet, but I'm pretty much sure you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, now I gotta go There's watch that too, it was too, there were too many things, too many. I, I'm like, uh, continuity was probably really hard to maintain, especially for that room. Yeah. See, now I'm, for I'm, both now rooms, I actually. Mm -hmm. Now I have to go back and watch the first one. <laughs> All right. That was a good catch. Though. Now, wait, what scene was it supposed to have been? Which scene? I, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to go back and watch. I'm wondering if it was when they were in his office. Yeah, that's what it says. So behind him. Okay. Torching the office. So behind him, when the when they first met him, one of the bottles was missing. So I have to go back and watch that and see if I can catch on to Chris Evans being revealed. <laughs> early on. Maybe he drank it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that was the other thing I didn't like. The fact I'm like, why do you have a car that you can't drive? And it made me think about the Jetsons for a split second just because of how the car <laughs> <laughs> was on the land <laughs> But I was like, okay. Why? And it, yeah, when when okay, like, well, why do you have a why is the car on the roof? <laughs> He's like, I can't drive it on the island. Why do why? <laughs> yeah, right. I can't why? Drive, so why not put it on the roof? <laughs> all right, so that because the fiddler is there, and you need something to sit. In. <laughs> you need something to sit in. All right, so that is gonna wrap <laughs> us up for a, another episode of Get to the Chat Room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had to say. It. I Thanks to for saying appreciate it. What? <laughs> and... Don't give me strange looks.